All right, how was your uh, second full day at sea? I, I was unfortunately unable to be there. I heard that the Fancy Pants Parade was quite fancy. It was extremely fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a difficult decision that needs to be made at the Fancy Pants Parade. Yeah, the old, the heavy hangs the crowd. That's right, that's right. On the U.S. to judge the Fancy Pants Parade. That's what they say. Apparently you wear a crown. Yeah. Uh, welcome to, to Robot Day. We have many funny robots out here. I see you here today. You can always say a happy beep-boop. As you can see, we are also dressed as robots. Yes. I said, no, we're going to start coordinating what we're doing because this looks ridiculous. I was thinking about saying, we look like the weirdest ages of man poster that I've ever Boja shaped, clothing, clothing shaped us so hard the other night that we just walked, waved off into some other parallel universe. It was like some ill informed boy band. Yeah, it was the shittiest, the shittiest, the shittiest uh, album cover of the country guy. We are whatever. We are the clothing shaped someone to being an afro. <laughs> I got shaved all of them. <laughs> Uh, we got a lot of sugar nights, so we're going to get right to our morning announcement. It's been the students. Uh, first and foremost, I have to issue extremely humble apologies on my behalf. Uh, there were a number of folks in the 24-7 uh, gaming tables in the Lido. Uh, Myrtle Lafferty Myrtle Lafferty was hosting a gaming event, and because I had scheduled it across the closing of the main dining room, I put in the description of it that it was going to be taking place in the Lido in that section. I neglected to inform any of our team about that fact. So they ended up coming and going and I believe forcibly ejecting a table or two. If any of you are here, first of all, from the bottom of my heart, I apologize, that was my bad. And second of all, let me know after the show, we've got John Deere being puzzled. <laughs> Hopefully they can eject more than 13 people for a great show. Uh, tonight, a couple of very awesome things. Another live RPG gaming session happening right here at 10 30. Anybody come last night? Yeah. So great. Your, uh, your special guest players this evening are going to be Merle Lafferty and Mark Gaggs Gagliardi. So that'll be fun. And also out on the CD deck tonight is Drew's party, our party in Slag. Our party in Slag. Once. Boston Paradise, before that, the dress party, also Pride. We're not sure what the theme is, but we really hope you join us. Yeah. There, there shall be back deck juice. Oh, yes. Oh, and also, uh, Lee Ortiz is going to once again do the yes, uh, drag king number at that, so that will be awesome. Well, we learned an interesting fact about the news back deck juice number two in the ranking of cocktails sold on board. Uh, and an unfortunate double entendre. A double entendre, as of today, Drew's Dak Deck Juice is number two. <laughs> Why right behind? The Bloody Mary. No, 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 it's actually what it is. Yeah, true, yeah. sure, true. Sure. Right away was number four. Oh. Wow. I see the, 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 the schism in the church, I believe. <laughs> when you come to the king. <laughs> um, only one suggestively named cocktail can remain. Does anyone remember what number three was? I don't know. It was Coke. Oh, it's Coke. It was Coke. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. I think we were all, uh, all the old Coke Zeros that anyway, were drank by John Scalzi, which really helped boost the numbers. Uh, you may have seen, and if not, uh, you will eventually see in all of your uh, state rooms today the uh, enrollment form. For uh, Luggage Direct. I know, you don't want to think about the end of the cruise yet, but eventually it's going to happen. Uh, this is a service that the ship provides where, for a fee per bag, you can have them take your bag at midnight on the last night. They will take it off the ship and send it to the airport and check it onto your flight form. You don't have to touch that bag until you land back home. Uh, the reason I. Yeah, it's awesome. The reason I mention it now is the deadline to turn in these forms is, as it says in the red up top, mid, uh, March 13th, which is 
two days from now at 5 p.m. And if you miss that deadline, there's nothing we or they can do about it. So if you're considering taking advantage of that program, make sure you don't go out. It's the tractor of luggage services. <laughs> also, uh, today, onboard booking has opened for Jumbo Cruise 2025. <laughs> Drew, you care to talk a little bit about that? Indeed, uh, this evening you will find, if you have not already found, onboard booking forms in your stateroom. If you're missing an onboard booking form, you can find them down in the atrium at the info desk. And if you're so antsy to book onboard for Joe Cruise 2025 that you just can't wait until you get back to your stateroom, the onboard booking team is outside the theater on deck two, and you can complete. You're on, we're looking for them there. And Wait, no, they're, they're, they're up here. here. They're actually up there. They're up here. Oh, my God. So, the point they got is Spooky Monster. Yeah, the Spooky Monster. There is Spooky Monster. What's in the box? Pain and bookings. <laughs> and maybe cookies. Uh, we process onward bookings in the order that they're received. Uh, only certain categories are available for booking on board. Uh, primarily Ocean Views and Verandas, because that's most of what remains. Uh, there's a small inventory of suites and interior statements left on our website. Um, and I believe that I haven't just misspoken, although the final answer is what's available is on the forms. Um, forms, booking forms will get uh, priority uh, on their placement requests in the order that they're receiving the process by. So if you have a specific place room, well, guys, it's <laughs> great. We got a specific state room request. We try that on the form, we'll track the order that we got it, and we'll make sure that, that makes it into the booking engine on land. And don't worry, we're going to talk about this for like eight more hours between now and the end of the week, too. So if you missed some of that, we'll review tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, speaking of which, we're going to meet Brandon Turk. <laughs> that would be nice to go out and touch sand. I don't know how much grass is really that sort of thing. That sort of thing. Or you can stay here on the ship and just chill or do whatever. It's your cruise, you do what you want with it. Within legal limits. Um, also, one last thing, uh, the end of the announcements. So we have had, we, there are a couple of bookings on this cruise who unfortunately due to travel delays uh, were unable to join the cruise when we sailed. They, they got delayed late enough that they missed the cruise. One of those bookings is taking a three-legged flight to Grand Turk and will be eating us there. The other booking, so the new Staten Dam sailed on Sunday from Fort Lauderdale and is stopping in Grand Turk tomorrow, just like us. So there's one of the booking who purchased a booking on the new Staten Dam, are sailing on it, and boarding in Grand Turk. This is where you, you come in. At 10 a.m., uh, which is, we know when they'll be boarding, we would like to welcome them. If you are still on the ship and around, if you can get to the port side of the ship, either if your room is on the port side to get to your window or to your balcony, or on deck three, the promenade deck on the port side at 10 a.m., we would have one. There's sort of a little welcoming thing happening. I don't even know what it is. Drew won't tell us. It's a secret. Uh, but if you want to be part of that, just at 10 a.m., we'll make an announcement tomorrow. But it would be cool and fun, we think. So, thank you guys. Welcome to the board. Bring me two bubbles. Yes. <laughs> they won't know what they are at all, no. They won't even appreciate the room again. Well, we're sending one of them to the new satin dam. And they'll be like, yeah, that number here. Uh, that ends the morning announcements. Um, Because uh, you you introduced this guest to the to the cruise. That's true. Um, yeah, for about eight years I lived on Fifth uh, Street and Avenue C in East Village, which is not far from a uh, nightclub that Alan Cumming opened called uh, Club Cumming. Uh, and uh, for a long time, I can't remember, was it Fridays? I think Daphne hosted um, a show there, and. Uh, Eventually, we got to be friends, and uh, I started to perform at the Lower Beachman in downtown Manhattan, and then I brought Paul to, or up in town Manhattan, I brought Paul to see a show downtown with Daphne. And uh, she is 
a cabaret performer, uh, a physics tutor, uh, and has a degree in classics from NYU. Uh, she's really a very good time. Uh, a hilarious and lovely person, and I'm, I'm really honored to uh, introduce her to all of you tonight.
first chose to, um, I, I mostly selfishly used James's beautiful music um, as a soothing arena in which I process my own shit. Um, and uh, we did a show last year, the one that Drew mentioned at the Lori Beachman Theater. It was a bit of a little residency we did there, um, where I um, decided that I was going to solve the human condition. Yes! Yeah, I'm going to do it. And um, here, here's where we, we started. It was a little wild, but I, I think there's a lot to keep up with, lots of frontiers to try to address, lots of balls in the air, lots of balls on the ground, lots of balls in between the air and the ground. And um, you, do, you do your best with those. And um, so try to just be aware of everything there is to take care of. We just find that we can only do our best. Our cultural conscience has got us in knots, but try to detangle what's overly taught into the brain now with all that we've got, because we're hanging on by a thread. I'll make sure it's mindful, but carefree and good. Outline and address our compulsory shoulds. We'll misunderstand or be misunderstood, because we're following by a Because you, know, you don't just 
n now I'm woman, it's, you know, well, what kind of woman? What kind of person? What are your values as you carve out your de desired self? Um, and also, it's a dumb song. <laughs> um, uh, has anyone ever heard the term passing? Do you know the term passable? Yeah. So to pass means that, like, were I walking down the street in the subjunctive mood, um, <laughs> someone would just assume that I were uh, assigned female at birth, that I would pass as a woman. And um, I take umbrage with the term because it feels like I'm trying to come off as something I'm not. When like I'm just been, I'm just here, I'm just trying not to want to hate myself when I get out of bed. And some days I'm more successful than others. Uh, is like, what, I get a C? <laughs> I will have you know that as of recently, I am a B. Um, yeah, so here's the song. Does anyone remember the 1998 version of Cinderella with Whitney and Brandy? In a beautiful city. 
on a beautiful planet. <laughs> In a fine galaxy. <laughs> Orbiting a really pretty star. <laughs> Milky Way, I don't know. Yeah. And so I think it's time to open this up and walk us, all of us into an affirmation circle.
are real good about like if it doesn't happen in Europe it doesn't count so I'm, it's the, it's the oldest in Europe that we found and it's called the Seculos Epitaph and it was written um, in the first uh, century BC in Ephesus and they found it um, engraved on this stone that they think was um, his wife's gravestone he wrote this here and it actually has musical notation that we can like both have lyrics and music and kind of represent confidently about 2,000 years later. And um, it was written in Greek, I think coined coin Greek, and um, so we did. And then I decided, I, I don't know, part of why I love classics so much is sort of placing myself in this context of human history that isn't so in the hyper-present moment. And it's actually like, we've, we've been at this a while. We've been doing this for a minute. And I guess I find that comforting in a way that that we are just one little sliver, and as much as there it, it, it is the end, it is the end of now, and then there will be something else after, and I find some small solace in that. And um, in that sort of spirit of carrying forward this legacy of the human tradition, we took the Greek, translated the Greek into Latin, translated Latin into Italian, translated the Italian into English. So you're gonna have to hear and not know what the fuck it's saying for a long while, but then we'll say it in English at the end. But it's wild to me that this is what this dude was singing about 2,000 years ago. Oh, so 
maybe those uh, ancient Greek temples started to become some Roman temples where I started speaking some Latin. Yeah. 
snow It's the end of the road It's a resting stone It's a little alone It's a sliver of glass It is life, it's a sun It is night, it is death It's a trap, it's a gun The open it blooms A fox in the brush The knot in the wood The song of the thrush The wood in the wind A cliff, a fall, a scratch A lump, it is nothing at all It's the wind blowing free It's the end of a slope It's a beam, it's a void It's a hunch, it's a hope And the river Shot stone, a fish, a flash, a silvery glow, a fight, a bet. It's the range of a bow, it's the bed of the well, in the end of the line of a dismay in the face. It's a loss, it's a find, a spear, a spike, a point, a nail, a drip, a drop. <laughs> the end of a tail, it's a truckload of bricks in the soft morning light. It's the shot of a gun in the dead of the night. A mile, a must, a thrust, a bump. It's a girl, it's a rhyme, it's a cold, it's the It's the mud, it's the mud A blow, a drift, a flight, a wind A hawk, a quail The promise of spring and the river bank down to the waters of March It's the end of all strain It's the joy in your heart James Shepard, everybody! You know what, y'all? Tonight's show's just gonna run long and you're gonna have to live with it. But we're on vacation, right? Let the red team wait! Yeah. Um, red team wait! Red team wait! Red team wait! They're just gonna sit on their tractors and wonder why they can come in.